And as our last finalist, uh, we have the team from the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. This is a group of five, but unfortunately because of visa issues, two, two people could not come. But these three are here to do a wonderful job on their presentation. Thank you, Taryn. So can we start? OK, thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chen Xi. I'm from KAIST. I'll be presenting the flexible simulation model that we came up with to solve the finished vehicle delivery problem given by GM. And this is Zhonghun and this is Songhun. Unfortunately, two of our team members, Jian Song and Guo Yuan, can't come here because of visa issues. But please know that all of us work equally hard for this competition. So this is what we are going through in this presentation. We'll talk about how we understand and frame this problem, how we build our model, and how our model performs on problem data set. And we provide some interesting insights on how AV influences the vehicle delivery process. And we also consider some potential extending benefits that our model can provide if it can be further developed to meet the information needs of different stakeholders. So finally, we prepare some supplementary materials in case you have some questions about what I talked. So for introduction and problem framing, I guess previous teams already give you inf enough information. So I don't want to bore you again with similar things. I will just go through these two parts quickly, and we can move forward to focus more on our models. So with four plants and over 300 liters, totally we have over 30,000 pairs, and we need to deliver all, over 1.8 million vehicles distributed in every day in two years continuously. And we can go through VDC before going to dealers, and we can also go from plant to dealers directly. So as the data given by GM has been desensitized, the location of all the plants, VDCs, and dealers are not clear. So to have a better understanding about this problem, we find an example to share here. So this figure gives us the network between the plants and VDCs, and we find it even somehow follows the distribution of railway network in US mainland. And this figure gives us the network between VDC and dealers. It's very obvious that geographic groups of dealers are assigned to corresponding VDCs. So both figures gives us very intuitive feeling about how the vehicle delivery process looks like, and they also give us some ideas how, that how we can design our own model. So as uh, the calculation of total cost for delivering over 1.8 million vehicles is very complex. So we try to frame it by looking at the cost structure. Inspired by previous example and some other background knowledge, we divided this vehicle delivery process into two parts. The part one is from plan to final VDC, and part two is from final VDC to dealer. And the total cost can be divided into four parts. The first part is the logistic cost for plan from plan to final VDC. And the second part is the VDC cost, which includes VDC opening cost, vehicles handling cost, and overflow cost. And the third part is the logistic cost for Micron, which is from final VDC to dealer. And the fourth part is the lead time cost for each vehicle during the vehicle delivery process. So totally, for four different scenarios, for static with and without AV, dynamic and with and without AV, what we want to do is to find suitable strategic and dynamic routing policy and use AV properly to minimize the total cost. So for solving these problems, we considered and also tried many possible methods, like traditional mathematical methods, multi agent reinforcement learning, simulation optimization. But finally, we got much feeling experience. But just inspired by these feeling experience, we built a simulator with SingPy and other Python packages and solved these problems by testing some heuristic rule-based routing policy on it. And before we run in our simulator, we pro spent much effort on data processing. The vehicle requirement data given by GM was formulated as input of our simulator. And data set one and two were analyzed to provide the idea of building model and provide some reference and criteria for our model output. So inside the simulator, for, from plan to final VDC, we set the static and dynamic routing policy. And for, for part two, from final VDC to dealer, we set the last leg delivery and AV policy. And based on these, the simulator will give us the output result. And we can compare and analyze the output result with the reference and criteria given by dataset one and two. In this way, we can continuously improve our simulator and routing policy. 
Uh, the SingPi didn't provide graphic interface like other commercial simulation software. So here, let's take a closer look on how our model work and how can we get the result. 44 VDC objects were generated by a VDC generator as soon as the simulation starts. And each VDC has many labels, which are shown here. And these labels are designed by us manually because we want to collect the information that we are interested in. And similarly, the vehicles are generated by a vehicle generator uh, by following the arriving plan time of finished vehicles. Each vehicle also has many labels. We use these labels to record the logistic cost of each part during the vehicle delivery process. So during simulation, the information in the labels will be calculated and refreshed. Finally, after the uh, simulation ends, then we can get the output. And we have an animation to show how it works. The VDCs are generated here. And from plan to final VDC, and waiting for make. We change another VDC as final VDC. Thank you. When the original final VDC doesn't have enough capacity. So in our model, for all the VDCs within 300 miles to the target dealer, we choose them from closest one to the farthest one. If the VDC has enough capacity, then we choose. If not, then we choose another one. If not, then we choose another one. But anyway, we won't choose the final VDC beyond 300 miles. If the final VDC within 300 miles don't have enough capacity, we will still choose the closest one as our final VDC. So for the part two of our problem, the last leg delivery, we decompose this problem into two sub-problems. The first sub-problem is dealer clustering problems, focusing on which dealer should be covered by a micron chuck. And we solve this problem by using the sweep algorithm. And specifically in our model, we implemented the forward sweeping and backward sweeping to get class better clustering results. And the second sub-problem is traveling salesman problems, which focus on um, what's the optimal traveling sequence within a cluster. And we solve this problem by using the TSP algorithm inside the Python package. The use of AV in our model is, in fact, I must say, it's simple. As long as the distance between the final VDC and dealer is less than 300 miles, then we let the vehicles drive themselves to the dealer directly without waiting. But here we want to talk about another interesting insight about the use of AV in last leg delivery. The left figure here shows the cost relationship of AV and truck. We can see that the cost for AV is always fixed at $0.55 per mile, while the unit cost for truck is decreasing with the increasing of load. And the intersection point is happened between 7 and 8, which means that if the load of truck is over or equal to 8, then truck is a better choice, while if not, then AV. So based on this, we consider the combination of truck and AV in the last leg delivery. Assume there are three dealers to cover. Previously, if the distance between final VDC and dealers are larger than 300 miles, then we must use the micron truck in our model. Then the micron truck will just follow the root one, which we should here as R1 in this figure. It must pass dealers one by one to deliver the vehicles. But now if we can combine the features of AV and truck, then we can let uh, the truck drop off the AV as the distance of 300 miles from dealers. In this way, we can shorten the distance the truck drives, which we should in R2 here. So this animation sh should our idea clearly. So dropping off, dropping off, then dropping off. Here, we provide the solution for how can we find this kind of routes or how can we find this kind of optimal points of combination in this sentence, in this circumstance. We use the angle bisector to find the solution. And here, we have the animation to show how it works. For the first iteration, we could connect final VDC, dealer one and dealer two, and use angle bisector to find a point on the dealer one circle. And similarly, we can connect dealer two, dealer three, and this green point to get an intersection point on dealer two circle. Similarly, an intersection point on dealer three circle. But these points are not optimal points because the points that we really want to go are the points on the dealer's circles, while not the dealer two or dealer three. So here, this is why we choose the second iteration. So by doing the second iteration, we connect the final VDC, dealer one, and the green point on the dealer two circle, while not dealer two and find a new intersection point on dealer one circle. Also similarly, a new intersection point on dealer two circle and a new intersection point on dealer three circle. So 
by doing this kind of iteration, we think that within limited times of iteration, we can find the combination of optimal points, which gave us the optimal route of mucron check. So we also conduct another sensitivity analysis for how AV influence the uh, cost and lead time. We all know that there is a trade-off between customer certification and AV available distance, which says that if the AV drive itself for too long distance, then the customer will recognize it as a used car. So how to decide this, this value, this distance? In our problem, the assumption is that AV can drive itself for 300 miles, but is this 300 miles an optimal value, or is it reasonable, or do we have other choice? Here, by running our flexible simulator, we conduct the sensitivity analysis between the cost, lead time, and the AV available distance. The left figure is the relationship between distance and the cost. We can see that with the increasing of AV available distance, the average cost gradually decreases, but it becomes flatter. And we can also find the similar tendency on the lead time and the available distance. And the red line shows where now the assumption 300 miles is. So if 300 miles is not accepted by customer, our analyze can help to find a balance between cost and distance. And by running our flexible simulator, other ideas can be also can be tested very easily. So here is the model result running by our model. We compare it with dataset one and dataset two under the same conditions, static and non-AV. And we decrease the total cost by 20%, and this decrease is mainly from the 60% lower milk run cost and 30% lower lead time. We also give the quantitative answer for how AV influenced the vehicle delivery process. We got significant improvement from the cost and also the lead time. So finally, we also consider some potential extending benefits that our model can give for different stakeholders in the whole vehicle delivery process. First, for GMZ, can get less lead time delivery, competitive edge, and flexible cost control. And from GM to transportation carriers and to the auto haulers, they will get the similar benefits like improved asset utilization and increased cooperation. And finally, to dealers, they can have reduced inventories and the increased certification. All of the stakeholders in this delivery process can be benefited if our model uh, can be further developed to meet the information needs of different stakeholders. So finally, a brief summary for what we finished in this competition. First, we understood and framed this problem systematically, and we built a very flexible and easy extending simulation model, and we achieved this kind of results. And we provide some interesting insights and some quantitative answer for how AV can influence the vehicle delivery process. And finally, five young researchers were trained to solve the real problems and group cooperation. So thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please ask to know.